Today I'm going to go over how to form your imperfect and perfect tenses in Latin. So we're starting off with the imperfect tense. And once again you can see the dictionary entry of my phone. For the imperfect tense, we will never use this first part here. So I'm going to go ahead and cross it out. Remember, borrow means I work. It's present tense. For the imperfect tense, we're going to use the second principal part, laborare. But I need to chop off the RE when I'm forming it. So take off that RE. And I'm going to plug it in down below. So lavora. And lavora are my stems there. Then I need to add a BA to both of them. Doesn't have to be capitalized, I'm doing it for emphasis. This is third person, so I'm going to use the same third person endings that we do for each verb. Okay, that's used in the present tense. So it'll be T and NT. We don't have a subject here. So we're going to say he, she, or it. And then this verb means to work. So imperfect tense is was or were working. So I'm going to say was working. Yeah. Then for my plural, we're going to say they, since we don't have the nominative, were working. So this is the imperfect tense. Then this BA that's going to help me recognize it. The T and NT helps me with the subject, just like it always did with our present tense. So what comes before the T and NT will change our endings. And we're always using this second part, the infinitive part, minus the RE to form the imperfect tense. So let's try another one. Intro intrare. Once again, I'm using the second part of my verb, and I'm chopping off the RE. So intra is my stem for both parts. Then I'm going to add a BA, because that's what makes it imperfect. And then a T for a third person singular, and an NT for a third person plural. The difference being third person singular verbs would be used with a singular nominative, third person plurals would be used with a plural nominative, like tua. Then when I translate it, so we don't have a nominative here, the V he, she, and it, the overall verb meaning is to enter, so I know imperfect tense is translated as was or were biking. So this is going to be was entering. And then for intro I'm going to have they were entering. So once again, this BA is what we add to make it imperfect. And then we have the letters T and NT. And in perfect tense, is always going to translate as was blanking in the singular and were blanking in the plural. And we're just doing third person right now. So in trabant and in trabant. So we're taking our second principal part once again and cutting off the RE. So that's why I get the stem on the overall mean 52 enter. That look at how I translated these. Neither one of these mean to enter it. He or she was entering, they were entering. Then let's do another imperfect. So once again, I'm taking my second part, chopping off the RE, and that's why I get my stem, and they. And a man. 
that I must have the BA to make it imperfect? Without that BA, it's not imperfect. You just be making no living it very hard. So a may bot and a may bot. I'm gonna say he, she, or it was by. And then I'm saying they or fine. Okay, you're gonna need the twelve o'clock. So once again, the BA makes it imperfect. It's no way. You want to close that he and anti tells you if it's singular or plural. He, she, or it, or they. But our imperfect tense verb will always translate as was blinking. Or were blinking the put. Start. Once again, we're always using the second principal part. And there are. So this is the imperfect tense. The most important verb in the imperfect tense is the verb to be sum asse vui. This verb, remember the present tense, sum, est, est, and sunt breaks our rules. It's no exception in the imperfect tense as well. It will also break the imperfect BA rule. The third person singular will be a rot. And the plural will be a rot. So we're not using anything up here because it's an irregular verb. So that means it breaks our BA. But it's still imperfect. So we'll translate as he, she, or it was. And then the plural, but it'll be they were. We also have no be. I'm going to even erase it so it's no longer here. Volga, man, yeah. One of the most calm errors I see is people trying to put a BA. There is no BA. The full perfect tense is a rot in the singular and a rot in the plural. So spelling's really important. If we wanted to make this verb a different tense, remember pleasant is sumed as sumed as as sunt and a perfect form of speaking also was the imperfect form of this verb. It's a regular, it has no BA. Moving on to our perfect tense. For the perfect tense, we're going to use the third part of the verb. This is the only time that we actually use the third part of the verb. It's just reserved for that perfect tense. And when I use it, I'm going to always chop off the I. So EG is my stem there. And then technically I'm adding the eye back in there, but I always want you to think of that you're chopping that eye off. Because in the second part, we're attaching E-R-U-N-T to make it plural. So no eye there. So that's why it's really important to use the crux stems. We spell it correctly. So E get there would be he, she, or it, or <laughs> And egret would be they urged. So what tells you this is a perfect tense verb is the stem must always come from this third part of the verb where we get the perfect stem. Then it needs to have a perfect ending. Either the it or the e on empty. So those may get perfect tense. They will always come from the third part of the verb, have an it if it's singular, e or unt if it's plural. It always translates with an e -G. A blight. No, you can think of it as perfect because it's already done. This is our second type of past tense. So in Latin, it's really important to know your difference between your imperfect and perfect. 
And a big difference there, is your perfect always uses the third part of the bar. Let's do another one, we have do dare daddy. So once again, we're only looking at the third part. And then I'm chopping off the eye. So dead, D-E-D, -E -D. it's gonna be the stem for both of these. Then I'm adding an I-T to make it singular, and an E-R-U-N-T to make it plural. My subfix gonna be he, she, it, and they in the plural. So translate, give, in the past, always rule of thumb, add your E-D, give it doesn't make any sense in English, so I know it will be gay. If you were ever to translate it as give it, that would be fine. But just make sure perfect sense is perfect, it's already there. So I'm looking to make sure that our stem matches up, and then I've added IT and ERUNT to make the part. And my last one here. So once again, I'm taking my third principal part and then chopping off the eye. So can specs then can specs will be my step. I had I T to make it singular, then T R U N T to make it plural. It be he, she, or it caught side of. And they caught side of. Because catch it did with an ED doesn't make good sense in English. It's not good English. So caught would be its perfect form. So once again, my perfect stand matches up with the conspects and the conspects. Now my perfect then means IT and ERUNT make this a perfect verb. You can still see that this verb ends in T and NT. All third-person verbs end in T and NT. It's what comes before it that will tell you the tense. So hopefully this has helped you form your different tenses.